All right, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with real name, username, no, anything like that? Nick Tibbetts. Nick Tibbetts, there you go. Uh, with his blue-white modern control deck that he brought to the uh, IQ today, uh, tell us what, what made you want to play this kind of deck. Let's start with that. Uh, I, I really enjoy my opponents not being able to play Magic. And Ancestral Visions just got unbanned, so I just thought I'd try those. Yeah, so there's a and there's an overlay or something here. That's Ancestral Vision, uh, borrowed from a friend, right? Uh, yeah, that's why this sleeve ripped at the moment. All right, we'll talk more about those in just a bit, but I guess we'll start we'll start from the top and we'll work our way down. Uh, win conditions in the deck include obviously like Snapcaster. Oh, I have one Snapcaster to beat him down. That's it. If I get to do that, I probably deserve a trophy. <laughs> Fair enough. But the lowly. Uh, Batterskull, Gideon, Elspeth. I say lowly, but I've, I've watched you crush with those. Um, uh, Elspeth is rarely overpowered, so... <laughs> just a bit. Just a good bit. Uh, Gideon either wins me the game or dies and lets me continue. It's... Uh, he's, it's usually Elspeth that wins. How long... How, how often has Gideon just been fog for you? Just a uh, five mana fog. Every once in a while. Um, for the most part, he just survives a couple turns. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, giving me time. Okay. I mean, that's basically all this deck does is buy time. And uh, then... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just... Uh, the other win condition I'm noting here, the four Celestial Colonnades. Mm -hmm. We'll get to the lands in just a bit, but since that's sort of a high curve card in a way, um, just, just a classic goes into every blue-white control deck in modern ever card, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Basically six mana, because it, it might have vigilance, but you can't attack if it's tapped. That's it? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, so my favorite little, I mean, we have the usual package, four Path to Exile, um, four Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, that, what, that's sort of what you expect. Wall of Omens, we get all of that. Most Some control of these... decks don't really play that many Wraths, like they're normally like two to three tops. I, I really wanted to make sure I don't have any problem with creature decks ever. Fair enough. And in the in the meta today, you sort of expected, or is this a little bit of a holdover from Eldrazi? Or um, I think people are on uh, very aggressive decks today because, well, I guess they just don't really know what to expect of the meta, so they want to outrace everybody. I I definitely agree. When the meta is forming, just try to outrace is a good way to do it. And I guess a lot of decks are trying to get out under ancestral vision. Yeah, that was a terrible idea for today. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, they were before today. They were uh, a negate, two more detention spheres, and a second snapcaster mage. Uh, main board yeah. negate. Yeah, I mean, um, I have kind of magic for creatures. I figure out why not one negate. It's so far it's countered a lot of planeswalkers. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Rune Halo. <laughs> Tell me about this main board removal removal card. Um, well, a lot of decks don't have answers to main board enchantments. Mm -hmm. um, Jund and Navzan are like one of the only exceptions to that. Uh, being able to like name cards like Listener Elf or uh, Clay Cover Scout, you know, things that things that they can get next for Trout or whatever. Lightning Storm. For right, them. yeah. Right. Um, Ad nauseum, even Lightning Storm. If I get a second one on board, I'd name Conflagrate just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> nice. Uh, I mean, like it might be game one for people to do real shit. So. so essentially, it's. Game one, like, get the read on what your opponent's playing, and then if they're playing a deck that needs that win condition, you just win because they can't deal with it in game one? If it's uh, typically. Some, yeah. I, I'll typically run Halo what I can't handle and verdict away the rest. Fair enough. Um, and then if you're on the draw, you just play it in response to what, whatever you see on the board. They have a Tarmogoyf out, you just play it for the Tarmogoyf, you know. Um. Typically, it's not quite as simple as that. Uh, I know the modern format well enough where I can kind of just guess cards based on their first couple plays. Okay, fair uh, enough. It, I guess what I'm getting at is that it seems like the kind of card that's uh, more effective the more narrow and linear the opponent's deck is, but if they're going wide with a bunch of different kinds of threats, like you said, Jund and Junk, for instance, uh, or Absin, whatever the kids are calling them these days. Um, it seems where it seems good still in those cases, but just less oh, backbreaking. It depends on how many uh, abrupt decays the deck's playing. I Admittedly. <laughs> Admittedly. Yeah. Now on the other side of things, uh, the long game cards, 
I'm looking at like the Supreme Ver or excuse me, we've, we've already covered the Wrath package, I guess. Uh, it's Sphinx's Revelation as a control breaker, I guess. Oh, um, well, Sphinx's Revelation is just awesome. It draws you cards. You gain life off of it. It can. It basically pulls you out of any bind ever. Sometimes you have to play it for one just to draw another land, but that's, sure. that's rare. Normally, the I have three wall loans and four spreading seas, those typically draw me into my lands fairly well. So it just reads, if the game goes on long enough, you win? It's an inevitability card, I guess? Uh, yeah, once you um, cast Sphinx's Revelation for something that's more than maybe four, I usually consider that Sphinx's Revelation for lethal. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Um, we, I see four spreading seas in the main board, though. Yeah. Uh, how's that been treating you, and, and why are they in the main board? Um, because I really, really hate Tron, and if Burn gets stuck on one or two lands, I'm, I can lock them out of the game. Yeah, we almost had, we had three Infect players and almost four. Um, I didn't actually get the chance to play today. Uh, so Ink Moth Nexus, that sort of thing as well? Um, yeah, of course, main lands are huge problems. Um, I can, but I mean, I can deal with them with that. So, sure. I mean, also Ghost Quarters and Tech Edges help a lot. Oh yeah, I, we've, we haven't gotten there just yet, but yeah, that's a good reason for the package there as well. Uh, detention Sphere to deal with problem permanents? Uh, it's just really good to solve all. I know, like, so non-creature permanents is a good example, or it can deal with tokens. Uh, oh, that's true. That's just in case I don't have a fifth, or one of my five wraths, which there have actually been games today where I lost because I just didn't draw a wrath. Mm. I believe you. Um, Ojutai's command. <laughs> so, you and I were talking earlier about how this is a blue-white control deck that's more, there's more emphasis on the white. We see that in the four planes versus two islands. We see that in Windswept over, say, Polluted Delta. Sure. Um, is Ojutai's command, I mean, you mentioned earlier that it's similar, it feels kind of like Cryptic Command, often it's just counter draw. Uh, is it the? Uh, Bullshit. Is it what you play because it's just easier to cast on the mana? Uh, yeah, cryptic is something I could probably cast frequently if I wanted to, but I'd have to fetch differently, uh, worry about my mana base a lot more. I would more often have a cryptic in my hand, not being able to cast it, than I wouldn't digitize command, which is I rarely miss land drops. Mm -hmm. And the modes are still useful, like you say? Right, there's counter draw, the famous cryptic mode. Yeah. Uh, you can gain four life, or you can return a creature with converted mana cost two or less to the battlefield, which is Wall of Omens and Snapcaster Mage. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not really enough instants in the deck, instants and sorceries, for me to really want more than one or two Snapcasters. I think I'm going to move the second visions over to a second Snapcaster, though. Fair enough. If only Snapcaster could target vision. Actually, wait, that would be terrifying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, pay two mana, draw three cards. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> alright, so I guess that's everything down here. Uh, well, no, trick bind for... Okay, so, so just for fetch lands and miscellaneous, I guess? Trick bind is such an interesting card. Um, I have gotten Planeswalker Ultimates with it. I've gotten Ink Moth Nexus activations, which won me the game. Oh, yeah. Um, I think my personal favorite is trick binding Cascade Triggers, or if I'm on the play, go land past land trick bind in response to their fetch so you have two lands and they have nothing seems pretty sick yeah absolutely so that those corner cases are why it's not well not corner case that's a bad way of putting it the uh the miscellaneous cases are why it's not shadow of doubt um i know shadow yeah, of doubt like I'm, I'm not encouraging playing trick bind at all i'm just really like the card fair enough fair enough nothing wrong with that man um i'm not gonna argue with somebody and, and say it's a great card well, it, it's you, good sometimes. You don't have to argue against me. I think that it's it's good sometimes. That's a good way of putting it. And other times you just wish it was anything else. It could be an Arbor Elf and I'd be happier. Uh, to me, it seems like one of those so much better on the play than on the draw. Um, if you're aiming to stone rain them, yes. Yeah. Um, if not, then it doesn't really make a lot much of a difference. Um, okay. I, I'm also able to trick bind, uh, what's the, Chalice of the Void? Uh, you can also trick bind the triggers um, in response, like if they have it on one, uh, that's you interesting. can path and trick bind. Because it's uh, when they're cast trigger. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. 
That's that's I have never I never thought of that before. Um, yeah, I've played with the card for a long time. <laughs> Nice. All right, well, that, that's where it's at then, man. Uh, moving on to the land base. Uh, obviously, both your colors, both your colors. So one glacial fortress, in case they can't read it because Chinese? Uh, yeah, sadly, the, the okay. dual lands are all in Chinese. Fair enough. Uh, the one English, however, that's cool. Uh, is it just me? The art is a little different, right? Or is that just me? Um, it looks like the coloring in different languages are a little bit different because they're made in different places and use different ink. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So that's why you can look at a foreign copy of a, the same card and it looks slightly different. Nice. Alright. I never noticed that. Okay, so I have learned something new today. I hope you have too. Um, one prairie stream um, with six basics. <laughs> Just a one of makes good sense? Uh, yeah, sometimes you want a blue and a white source on turn four for the verdict. Sure. Um, I don't know if it's fine, because I usually fetch for basics anyway. That's right. Um, we were on about, if you're going to have your fetch lands, obviously the four for your colors. Because it's white heavy, more than blue heavy, when swept over right. another blue one. Okay. Um, right. um, yeah, blue's, blue's definitely the splash color here. There's plenty of it, but it's there's no more than one blue symbol in anything except for Sphinx's Revelation. Okay, yeah, and that's a light game, usually a light game anyway. Right, yeah, there's a Jason sideboard, but I mean, other than that, there's no double blue. And speaking of, well, we'll get to that in just a sec. Actually, that's pretty much it other than the uh, LD package. Uh, Ghost Quarter and Tech Edge. Three quarters, two Tech Edge, that's... That's an awful lot of land destruction. <laughs> yeah, um, like I said, I just really hate trolling. Oh, well, I, I um, believe you. I actually got this deck list, or the original deck list from somebody who played in, at the Open in Memphis a, few, a couple months ago. Um, he made top 32 with it, and I just based my list off of his. Okay. And kind of, I've just moved numbers around here and there. Like, the trick mind is honestly, like, probably just shouldn't be there, but I don't have a fourth wall of moments. Fair enough. Um, do you think that now that Tron doesn't have uh, Eye of Ugin, maybe it's not as... Because I, I know playing control decks, it used to be the case. Uh, yeah, it every, used to be the reason I lost against Tron. Yeah, because every expedition map or Sylvan Scrying becomes an inevitability card, a card you have to counter or they... Inevitable Ulamog. Yep. Exactly. Um, maybe it's not quite as bad nowadays, for whatever that's worth. Well, it's definitely not quite as bad, but We're not going to see as much of them, but it's still... Yeah. Like, I think that Tron's a tough matchup, but I think that it not having either can kind of helps me a lot, because they can't continuously search out threats. Yep. Oh, I got... I definitely got you on that. All right, and, uh, do you have your sideboard by chance? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take a look at that. Um, I was wonderful today and only put 14 cards in my sideboard. Good idea. Let's do. There we go. Well, we can talk about the 15th card, I guess. Uh, 15th card probably just would have been a fourth time of reinforcements. Mm -hmm. Or. I don't know. There's, it could have been something. I almost put a Sun Titan in here just to get back my detention spheres. Mm. That seems like another like control mirror breaker, I guess. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. The uh, the fifteenth card was supposed to be a uh, copy of Crucible of Worlds. Okay, so to recur Tech Edge and Ghost Quarter. Right. Uh, all right. What matches would you have brought that in for? Uh, Tron. Mainly Tron. <laughs> um, if I'm on the play, I would consider bringing it against. Anything that isn't going to kill me quickly. Because mm. uh, if I can get a ghost quarter early on and manage to keep recurring it, then I'm probably in good position. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty safe to say. You're right. All right, so the one Jace Architect of okay. mm -hmm. uh, He's really good um, against small deck, like anything with Lingering Souls. Um, it's pretty good against Affinity <laughs> because I'm probably not going to be worried about you know, creating a plating on anything. Okay. Um, I was playing four detention spheres before though, so I did, didn't take into full account on that. <coughs> um, I don't know, it definitely is just not really a problem. Oh, fair enough. I mean, with five rats, two detention spheres, um, Elspeth, 
I can I can oh, see Elspeth's Affinity not being that big. Well, yeah, she's she's slow. I was just th thinking another Wrath, but you're right. Um, well, the issue with her, I did get to play her in Minus earlier to blow up something that was equipped with a cranial plating and a master of Ethereum. I um, managed to blow both of those up, which was really good, but that's about the best she's ever going to do for me. Gotcha. Uh, her Minus is not very good against Affinity in most cases. Uh, the plus is very bad because they can fly over you. That's right. I mean, it'll, I'll eventually kill them, but Batter Skull is much better uh, one con in that matchup today. So you go Jace and Elspeth switch, essentially, um, in the Affinity match? The Affinity match, I boarded out three of these, uh, the Ancestral Visions. Mm -hmm. um, I cut one Sphinx's Revelation, one Elspeth. And... I believe I actually took out a trick on that matchup. I might have just boarded out all four visions. Okay. Um, for three stony silence, obviously. Uh, three stony silence, Jace, and three timely reinforcements, which means I boarded something else out, but I can't remember. It was probably like a spur of the moment decision. Maybe. Um, yeah, it was probably tough. It was probably that. Gotcha. Uh, so on flash freeze, uh, expecting a lot of green and red uh, um, today. That's a. This is the card that's done very well for me. Um, I can board it against Jund. It's really good against Jund. Mm -hmm. uh, countered a lot of things. Uh, yeah. It was either that or Celestial Burge, and I couldn't really decide between the two. That is an, an interesting choice, yeah. Um, it also, it's really good against Burn. Uh, it literally counters every spell in the Burn deck. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they run any Shrine of Burning Rage these days. Uh, no, I certainly hope not, or else I'm probably just going to be upset. You don't want to have to have a reason to side in Stony Silence against the Burn deck. That seems pretty bad. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure if I see a shrine, I'm just going to hope I can uh, trick bind the activation or detention spirit. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, negates just all encompassing pretty much and dispel sort of the same way? Uh, yeah, they come in a lot against stuff like Infect or mm -hmm. really anything that's going to play counter magic or instant speed shenanigans. Fair enough. Uh, uh, negates, I probably bring it against Tron. I gotcha. Uh, the Planeswalkers, or All is Dust, that sort of thing. Uh, well, I mean, the, I can counter their dig um, early on if necessary. Uh, I can counter Karn, All is Dust. I gotcha. It really, like, it's just very good. Also, there's Ugin now. <laughs> there's that, yeah. So if they miss a step in the early game, don't ever let them get their feet. And if they make it to the... if they get Tron online, just counter threats. With Negate, essentially? Um, yeah, because I mean, I'm not really worried about Wormcoil Engine. I believe you. Um, Wormcoil is <laughs> probably you. my least. Oh, another matchup this is incredibly good against is uh, Ultrazi, because if they thought not me, I can counter the trigger. Oh. That is half the reason it's there. Oh. I really hate Ultrazi and I hate Tron. I hate things that aren't fair magic. Well, didn't we have one uh, Eldrazi player today running a, a temple uh, only version? Yeah, that was the guy letting me use uh, ah, the okay. Ancestor Visions. It's James Ames. Fair enough. Shout out to James. And, uh. My hero. Three Sony. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, no, no singing. Uh, three Sony Silence. Obvious what that's for, of course. Yeah. Um, Anything else you think of setting that in for? Just Affinity, pretty much? Uh, Affinity, Tron. Well, yeah, Tron. Um, if. I also expect to see a little Bopter combo today, so yeah. Sony Silence wouldn't be bad there. That's the the elephant in the room, but I didn't see but I think one Bopter play, if I remember correctly. I didn't see a single one. I saw nothing but aggressive decks, and then I saw one drawn deck. Mm -hmm. uh, two rest in peace for Living End. That's right, those Living End deck, too. Yeah, uh, yeah it's really good. It's Living End, Dredge Vine. Mm -hmm. It's... It's, it's just a really good um, graveyard hate cover that a lot of control decks can't play. Is it? It's not enough to side in against the uh, the decks that are just utilizing it for delve, right? You don't bring in one copy for Jund or anything like that. Um, if it's a deck that I see playing a lot of delve spells, I probably bring in the rest in peace. Fair enough. Uh, um, Tasker, Gurmog, Tarmogoyf. I don't know if that's or Scavenging Ooze. I don't know if that's quite enough. But I'm really not ever worried about Tarmogoyf. I've yeah. fought a bunch of them, and they usually die or get exiled right away. Alright, fair enough. I don't mind throwing my Wall of Omens in the way of Tarmogoyf to Wrath next turn. 
Oh um, timely reinforcements for burn, obviously, for um, any survivability. Any sort of aggressive deck that isn't in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, if I've got extra cards I don't mind boarding out against stuff like John, I'd probably bring those into you because it's just a tough deck. It's joined a very solid deck. That's actually my normal deck I play. Fair enough. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Nick. It's a, it's a sweet looking deck. I like the diversity of threats and answers. And I, I mean, you're, you're running trick mine for crying out loud. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Man. That's awesome. Yeah, um, there's only one thing I've debated on playing, so I've been playing, I've been toying around with like blue at X control decks for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing Esper control for a really long time, and my win condition was uh, uh, White Sun's Eve. The cat generator? The yes, it's three white and X, and you get X, two, two cats, and it shuffles back to your library. Okay. Uh, it is surprisingly an insanely powerful wing condition. And Esper had mystical teachings to search it up. But Wait a minute, was that an instant or sorcery? It's an instant. Oh my goodness. Um, I that have, is sick. I've responded so many times in combat to giant threats and just made enough cats to kill them <laughs> and to, to, uh, to chump one and then like have the rest of the cats kill them on the swing back. I love the flavor of that. A bunch of cats just leaping up and killing, I don't know, some giant Eldrazi swinging in or something like that. They're not happy about them killing a Johnny. No, nope, not at all. Yeah. Alright. Well, cool deal, man. Uh, so, one more time. In the future, you said the visions, some number of them would be replaced with. Um, I would probably put, not play more than three in the future. Um, Honestly, I would rather have a fourth wall of omens, but mm -hmm. it was a second snapcaster mage. All right, fair enough. All right, well, best to you, man. Good job. And uh, we'll see you later. Take care.